American rest stops are where all your dreams go to die. Like, and maybe you. Like, I, you don't need to FaceTime anybody else. You don't need to see them. Just call them. You don't, we don't need to see, you remember what they look like. Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen. And today I am talking about my controversial opinions about America or the things that I think America should change after having lived in the UK. There is a UK version of this video to check out as well. And also please know that this video is not going to be addressing things like guns or healthcare because those things are so obvious and so done in every single video. So these are kind of like my uh, more in-depth uh, and kind of silly controversial things I feel should change about America. Number one, the banking system in America, dumb, so dumb, always behind. We did not get like chip and pin cards until way after the UK. We didn't get contactless until after the UK. They're always behind in terms of like just debit and credit card possibilities. Um, a lot of banks charge you a fee for having an account at the bank, which I do know, I think does exist in some parts of the UK, but seems like a lot less common here. I mean, you can pay like for like a special account here, but in America, like a lot of just basic bank accounts have a fee if you don't do like 86 different transactions correctly or have like $8 million in the account. And also you can't move easily. You can't move easily. You can't move money easily from one person to the next from different bank accounts in America. Blows my mind having lived in the UK. Somebody was like, oh, well, just pay me back. Like, I'll give you my account number. I'm like, what? how am I gonna put money into your bank when we don't have the same bank? And they're like, um, you just, you just transfer it. And I'm like, between different banks? And they're like, yeah. You can pay money into a British person's bank account if you have two things known as their account number and sort code. Easy, easily done. It's how most people like pay bills or just pay people back for stuff or pay for, it's just easy. It's so easy. There's no fee, easy. In America, they're like, oh, well, you owe me like $20 for the dinner that we just had. So like, do you, I mean, I can like send you a PayPal request. I'm like, why are we PayPaling or Venmoing is the kind of like cash or money transferring app in the US. Like we need a separate app to transfer money between banks. And in the UK, it's all just baked in. It's all just easy, easily done. So American banking, it's so annoying and I feel like we really need to get with the times. The UK is way ahead of the US when it comes to banking. Okay, the next controversial opinion. This is honestly the dumbest controversial. I don't know, is this controversial? I think Americans should eat, I'm, so there are fries in America called chips in the UK. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like Americans should have more opportunities to eat them with meals. Now I know you're gonna joke in the comments and in your head and whatever about how Americans don't need to eat more fries. Like, okay, overall, yes, I get it. However, hear me out. Here in the UK, it's very acceptable to eat chips or fries with so many different things. Like, so many different meals, it just makes sense. For instance, pizza. Like, pizza and fries is a very acceptable combination for dinner. In America, it's not. In America, if you have pizza, you don't have fries because they don't go together. British people also eat something, and everyone says I say this incorrectly, but it's called like a chip, a chip buddy. I know people say I say buddy because I don't say the T, but it's basically a French fry sandwich. And I'm not saying that everyone like eats this for lunch, but it's like something that people can enjoy, have probably heard of. Putting French fries in a sandwich, genius. Why do Americans not do that? Americans, I feel like we limit the number of things we're willing to eat fries with. And I just feel like we should expand on that because I, if I could eat one food for the rest of my life, it would be uh, fries or chips. That's definitely what I would land on. And so I feel like in the UK, I just have so much more opportunity to eat them with all kinds of different meals and not look weird. Whereas in America, if I order a pizza, they're gonna think it's weird if I also order fries. And I think that we should change that. 
Okay, next thing, American rest stops, like off of a highway or motorway. Horrible, awful. I moved to the UK and I went to like a UK rest stop. I would go on a date in some of them. Like they will have like full restaurants sometimes, usually very clean, a very welcoming experience. Um, American rest stops are where all your dreams go to die. Like, and maybe you. They're just, it's just, it's not good. They're disgusting. There's a couple like within the US that are like, oh, America's like best rest stops. Um, they're not, they're not anything compared to a UK rest stop. It's going on a trip in the UK. I look forward to needing to go to the rest stop. I really look forward to it. Like there's also one, is it called T-Bay? Yeah, T-Bay, is that how you say it? Um, there's one when you go up to the north of England. So like genuinely, genuinely, I would just go there on like a staycation. I'm like, just take me to T-Bay services. We'll get something to eat. We'll like go like look at the ducks by the lake. So calming. American rest stops, really not the same. And I feel like American rest stops need to up their game to the level of British rest stops. Okay, the next one is tap water. Because tap water across most of the UK, all the parts of the UK I've come across, tastes pretty good. You just literally have it out of the tap, enjoy it, uh, good to go, no problems. American tap water, that's not the case in a lot of places, especially growing up in Florida. American tap water tastes like sulfur. It is really disgusting and most people do not drink Florida tap water out of the tap because it is so awful. This isn't the case in every single place because obviously geographical differences mean that different states will have different access to better tap water. But tap water in the US, not good. A lot of people drink bottled water because of this, whereas in the UK, bottled water is very uncommon for various reasons, but also because the tap water is just ready to go, ready to drink. So um, I guess my controversial opinion is I don't like most American tap water. It tastes disgusting. Um, it probably has 8 million chemicals that are slowly killing you and it's it's not an enjoyable experience. So when I go home uh, to America, I do drink water out of a bottle because like the tap water is just not good. So that's my uh, next controversial opinion. Okay, next up, the interior of American fast food restaurants. Let's specifically talk McDonald's because this is where like a major comparison comes in. American McDonald's, again, they make you depressed. You're like, ugh, I'm in a McDonald's. Like, I'm excited because I'm about to get a McFlurry, but also, like, I don't feel good about myself being here. British McDonald's, so nice. It's clean. Like, they're gonna have some sort of, like, the, uh, the tappy tappy, like, checkout. What is it? Like, the self, self order screens. They got those way before the US. Like, so you don't have to even interact with anybody. You just kind of do your thing, wait for your number. Um, British McDonald's, have just, they're far superior. The interior is far superior. You don't feel bad about your life being in a British McDonald's. At least I don't. I go in and I'm like, this is like a gleaming world of fast food. I'm kind of inspired. American McDonald's, no. Just the design, they're dirtier. They're just, like a lot of them don't have the self-servicing still. And I don't know if, I don't know exactly the reason for that, but they're just, it's not on the same level. So I remember moving to the UK and I was like, even UK fast food places are better than American ones. So yeah, I like how this video so far has covered like French fries and McDonald's because classic American, but I just prefer the interior of British McDonald's better. Okay, the next thing is Americans seem to think that everybody needs to listen to their phone conversation. And I know we can be loud as Americans, but when we're on the phone, A, we get louder. B, it seems to be that everybody in America thinks they need to be on speakerphone or FaceTiming without headphones in. If you go through an American airport filled with Americans, because mostly we travel domestically, everyone there is like on the phone with their mom, fine, but they're like FaceTiming her. They're not even like actually like, like looking at the person. They're kind of like holding it here, but they're like somehow on video. 
and everybody can hear both sides of the conversation. This just seems far more socially acceptable in America. Definitely not socially acceptable in the UK, though, like, I'm sure a couple people do it. But so annoying. Well, I say annoying, but like, sometimes I do want to hear the other side of the conversation because I'm nosy. But from a standpoint of like, my own personal like bubble, I don't necessarily want to hear your phone conversation in public. You being on the phone is one thing. Me also hearing the response from the other end is another. And I just feel like Americans need to stop this. Like they need to, we need to stop FaceTiming in public. You don't even need to FaceTime people. You only do that when like, you haven't talked to your grandma in like three months and you want her to remember what you look like. Or, you know, maybe you're on the phone with like, your significant other that's like long distance. Like, I, you don't need to FaceTime anybody else. You don't need to see them. Just call them. You don't, we don't need to see, you remember what they look like. So FaceTiming in public or having someone on speaker in public, very American thing, hate it. Like, please stop doing it. Okay, my next controversial opinion about America um, is that security at American airports is so weirdly slow and inefficient. So living in the UK, I go through some of the world's absolute busiest airports, Heathrow, Gatwick, like London airports are funneling people through. I don't wait that long in a security line typically in a UK airport. I'll go to an American airport. It could be like Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've never been to that airport. So people are going to be like, that's the best airport. I could be in some random American airport, like 10 people flying through and it takes an hour to get through security. It's the same. Is it the same security process? It, I think it's roughly the same security process, like between countries. Um, it's not entirely different. It's not like the UK just completely waves you on through while America is doing like a full body search. Like it's roughly similar. Some people will get called out of line, whatever. But the UK is just so efficient typically with airport security. I know like not all of the time, not every single time you're going to tell me about the time you waited for like four hours at Luton. Like I get it. But in general, American security just seems to be almost always so slow. Why? Someone answer this question for me. Let's speed it up. Like, let's get a system. Let's update something. Let's figure out why you have to be dropped off eight hours early at like the Tampa airport. I don't even know if there's an airport in Tampa. You guys, I'm just making stuff up for this video. Um, but you, ha you just really have to plan your time really, really well when getting to an American airport because the security is probably going to be slow. In the UK, Yes, you do. Obviously, security can, it, it takes how long it takes, but it just always seems faster in the UK. Next up, American Thanksgiving food. And this pains me to say because I feel like I am betraying my country. I don't understand most American Thanksgiving food. I think most of it looks like it's already been eaten, number one. And number two, it's like, this is like the day, this is like the day of the year when we're like, we're gonna eat as much as humanly possible. But like, you kind of choose like weird things that you wouldn't eat other times of the year. And you know, I made a dig at Christmas pudding in the UK in my UK video. So I feel like, again, equal opportunity. Let's talk about American Thanksgiving food. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan. I think like, we should really revolutionize Thanksgiving. We should get rid of so many casseroles. My problem is really the casseroles. Like it just, so many casseroles. And maybe it's just because I don't like a casserole. I don't know. I just, I, I feel like Thanksgiving food lets me down. I don't look forward to eating it. Um, and I basically just eat like mashed potato and bread rolls. But also that could be because I have the palate of like a five-year-old. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, my last controversial opinion about America has to do with a restaurant that I used to know and love. And I still know, but I'm not sure I love it. And I'm really sad about that. Whether you're American or not, you might have heard of a place called Olive Garden. Now, Olive Garden is where Americans go to get a chain restaurant style of Italian food. Now I have craved Olive Garden almost every time that I've gone back to the States for many, many years. I was like, yes, 
I know it's a chain restaurant, but Olive Garden breadsticks, amazing. Like, I just want whatever, like, pasta, like, I just, I loved an Olive Garden. I have to say, the longer I've lived outside of the U.S., the more I've realized how much of a disappointment Olive Garden is. The pasta is not very good. There's not that much flavor. I don't even like that much flavor, but there's not that much flavor. Um, it's all kind of like microwaved. I don't know if it actually is, but like, you know, it it's kind of just like microwave tasting Italian, Italian chain restaurant food. I do still love the breadsticks, but I would say my love for Olive Garden has sadly disappeared over the years. Um, and that is a controversial opinion because Americans love an Olive Garden. Like, what could make you feel better than going to this place where you can pretend that you're in Italy for like 45 minutes? Um, it's, it just, it feels like you're, you've traveled to like Naples or Venice or somewhere and you're just enjoying like this like authentic Italian food. But no, you're in like the suburbs of Oklahoma and you're just like eating sad microwaved um, lasagna. And so I'm sorry, Olive Garden, never gonna sponsor this channel. And this will get the Americans like really coming for me in the comments. I'm sorry, I've tried to love it still, but I just can't. Okay, that brings me to the end of this video. I realized this video and the UK controversial opinions video They've been unscripted. They've been slightly unhinged. I've maybe been too honest about my opinions on the internet. Should probably rein it in more. Um, but I would love to know what you thought about my opinions about these American topics in the comment do you, in the comment section. Do you have any controversial opinions about America? Again, your comments on guns, healthcare, whatever, they're not that interesting in this video. Like, we can talk about those in other videos. What are the kind of uh, more off the wall controversial opinions that you have about the states. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.